Well, starting today, millions more Americans can now get COVID-19 booster shots. The CDC and the FDA have approved extra doses of the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Boosters will be available for anyone 18 and older who received a Johnson & Johnson shot and seniors and high-risk individuals who got Moderna shots. Older and high-risk Pfizer recipients were approved for extra shots last month. Federal regulators are also backing a mix and match approach to inoculations. They say your booster shot doesn't need to be the same brand as your initial dose. American epidemiologist Dr. Uh, Michael Osterholm uh, joins us now. I wonder why we called you American, but uh, uh, he's the director <laughs> of the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy at the University of Minnesota. Not for nothing, doctors, doctor, but you guys usually have very long titles, and I don't need any additional words <laughs> thrown in there so funny. in the lead up. But doctor, hey. let us let us talk about these three COVID-19 vaccines um, in the U.S. Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson and Johnson are available for uh, booster shots. How important are these extra doses in the fight against COVID-19? Because, you know, right now it's being sort of pitched to us, general public, as an option. But do you think it's something that um, people should seriously consider getting? The booster shots are very important. Just remember one thing. These vaccines are absolutely remarkable, but they're not perfect. They're remarkable. And what I mean by that is, is that early on, when we first administered the vaccines, we didn't have any idea how long the protection might last that we get from the vaccines. And now what we're seeing is that over time, particularly for the Pfizer vaccine, to some degree with the Moderna vaccine, we don't keep that level of protection we first had when we got vaccinated. So now these boosters will basically bring us back to that place of much higher protection. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine never really got as high of a level of protection as we saw with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, but that protection lasted. So what we're really uh, uh, suggesting here now, rather than getting a booster in a sense, is what you're doing is really getting a second dose that then brings the J&J &J vaccine protection up to that of what is the Pfizer and the Moderna. So in a sense, there are really two different things happening here, but all of them are all about protecting people who have been vaccinated and keeping them protected going into the future. So, Doctor, earlier on CBS Mornings, uh, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky said there are distinct recommendations from the CDC on booster shots. I want to play a bit of what she said. People may prefer to get the vaccine that they got um, initially and, and did really well with. Others now may prefer to get another vaccine, and the CDC now allows for that mix and match option. Um, we have distinct recommendations. Um, we do recommend that you do get your booster if you um, receive the Johnson & Johnson vaccine um, or if, you have, um, if you're over 65 and you receive the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine or if you um, have underlying medical conditions and you're over 50. We make you eligible to receive a booster by virtue of where you live or work. So there are some um, some subtleties as to whether we highly recommend it or we just say eligibility. Um, but but all of those populations are now eligible. All right. So people can start seeking out their booster shots uh, today for Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. But based on what Dr. Walensky said, uh, what should people be considering? Uh, what should they be taking into account when they consider matching doses? At this point, uh, I think is what's ever most convenient for you. Uh, as uh, Dr. Lewinsky said, and I fully support, uh, you can use any of the three vaccines to help you achieve that better protection. So use what's most, uh, uh, what I would say, available and uh, just go with that. The most important thing is get your booster doses. Those are the uh, doses that will keep you from being in one of these what we call breakthrough infections. And so that's the most important message. Just get your dose. Uh, doctor, I want to talk about, you know, kids and their vulnerability while we wait for some sort of approval on a vaccine. You're in Minnesota. Um, recently, a school-aged child died uh, of COVID-19 complications. It doesn't happen very frequently, but, you know, any death is a big deal. Um, this is the, it's the only the second child to die uh, since the pandemic began in your state. But we've also had, you know, several um, faculty members, staff members in schools also die since the school year began. We are heading into flu season. I'm wondering if you are concerned um, about, you know, what we had been talking about maybe a couple weeks ago. Ago, which was a, t a twin demic. Yeah. You know, at this point, uh, it is very important to get children vaccinated, not just to protect themselves. And we all agree that fortunately they have, on average, less severe illness. 
but they also can be very effective in transmitting the virus to family members, mom and dad, grandpa and gram, and other people in the community. So vaccinating your children not only helps protect them, but also really helps protect others around them. So we urge that uh, parents really strongly con uh, consider getting their child vaccinated when it becomes available for their age group. As far as what we can expect for this winter, you know, we don't know. Uh, I can guarantee you that somewhere between we're going to have a major flu pandemic epidemic like event or we're going to have virtually nothing at all, just like we saw last winter. Mm. And while there are many people out there suggesting that we could have a twindemic, we just don't know. We have to be honest. But the bottom line message is get your shot for flu, too, because if we do start to see a sudden increase in influenza, that will make it very difficult for everyone to get vaccinated at that time. So now is the time to get your flu shot. Uh, and make sure you get your booster shot for COVID, and that will protect you the very most going into this uh, winter season. Hmm. Uh, so speaking of kids, Pfizer is hoping for children 5 to 11 to be eligible for their COVID-19 vaccine soon. Um, in some newly released briefing documents, the company says vaccine efficacy is at 90% for children. Uh, how would this vaccine fall into the inoculation schedule that typically kids have before, for example, they go to school. Um, are there any prerequisites that, that they must have? And I bring that up because Governor Gavin Newsom of California has said that, you know, he, his 12 year old is not going to be vaccinated just yet for COVID-19 because there are other inoculations that the child requires. Yes, at this point, the good news is that you can give the shot for COVID-19 basically at the same time you give the other immunizations. And if you're actually at your physician's office at that point or whatever medical clinic you go to to get your immunizations for your children, go ahead and get the COVID-19 at the same time. There's not a contraindication or some kind of prohibition of getting them all at that same time. And so uh, the good news is uh, make this part of your visit to get your regular shots. And we know that a number of children, because of what happened with COVID over the last 18 to 20 months, didn't get all their shots. They didn't make it into all of the visits that they should have had uh, to get their immunization. So we have more children that have fallen behind on their mumps and measles and rubella. And so now is the time to get caught up. And in many locations around the country today, uh, we are seeing many fewer COVID cases. Fortunately, the surge from this past summer has really started to subside. Uh, medical offices are more available for visits. Uh, clinics are available. So the bottom line message, get your kids up to date on your childhood immunizations and get your COVID-19 dose once that becomes available, which we anticipate for the 5 to 11-year-olds to be very, very soon. All right, Dr. Michael Osterholm, thank you so much. Thank you.